Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to replace your entire front suspension. Everything in the front wheel well is gonna be replaced. I'm talking about everything. We have lower control arms, all the bushings, the axle, the strut, any boots we have, the hub, the bearing, all the ball joints, the inner and outer tie rod, and the upper control arm. Literally everything from the wheel inwards is gonna get replaced. I already started on the other side. Let me give you an idea what I'm talking about. So here are all the old components and here's what it's gonna look like. There is nothing left in here. It's all gonna be brand new. And the reason why we're doing this is because all these components have 200,000 miles on them. They're old, they're rusty, they're worn out, and they have to be replaced. Let me show you what I mean. Driving this car is supposed to be a lot of fun, but it isn't. It's scary. You could feel all the play in the suspension. Steering is not accurate. It's vague. It wanders all over the road. Everything feels all loose and worn out. You could just tell that it's no good. Now you saw how bad it drove. Well, the next thing you'd want to look for is your tire wear. You can see here the outside edge of the tire is worn out, which is due to excessive camber. This is positive camber. If you see the inside wearing out, that's negative camber, but this wear could be due to a bad alignment. It's just a signal to check out the suspension to make sure it's okay. And to check the suspension, what you want to do is you want to grab a pry bar and we're going to go in here and pry at the front suspension. You wanna pry around the bushings and make sure they're not worn out. There shouldn't be much play. It will deflect a little bit, but this is way too much. I'm not even pulling hard on the pry bar. And you can see the whole upper control arm is moving around, and that's why the suspension on this car feels so horrible. Now that's just me and a pry bar. Imagine the entire weight of the car on the suspension. There's gonna be a lot more play than that. So all the bushings are bad, all the ball joints are bad, the bearings bad. Basically all the suspension components are bad and need to get replaced, so I'm gonna replace them all. And the good thing is, you guys are gonna learn how to replace and rebuild your entire front suspension. And we're gonna be doing this at home on jack stands using common hand tools. Now as always, I like to start off by putting on some eye protection. And all you're gonna need tool-wise is a breaker bar, some wrenches, ratchets and a socket set, a pry bar, a torque wrench, some pliers and snap ring pliers, screwdrivers, and a hammer. Now I do have an electric impact gun here just to show you guys that this is a very, very useful tool. It makes your job so much quicker and easier. Now I do understand not everybody has one, but if you're gonna be working on cars, definitely consider investing in one. Since not everybody has one, I'm gonna stick to using common hand tools, but I will link all the tools here in the description so you could easily find it. Now there are some more specialized tools that you're gonna need because we're gonna be pressing out a bearing and ball joints. So we have a ball joint press, we have a slide hammer, and we have a bearing press. Now since most people don't own these more specialized tools, you can rent them from your local parts store for free. And for whatever reason, if you can't find these tools for free, when we get to the point where we remove the knuckle, you could take this to your local shop, have them press out the old ball joint and the bearing and press in a new ball joint and bearing. It's not gonna cost a lot. Then you can come back to your house and continue replacing the rest of your parts. Now, speaking about parts, it's very important that you install good parts into your car. You don't wanna install junk and then they go bad and you don't have a good ride. Install quality parts. So you wanna make sure your parts meet or exceed OEM spec, and it's a good idea to make sure your parts have all the included fasteners and hardware. You don't want to reuse old rusted fasteners that are bent. In order to do the job 100%, you want to make sure you have new fasteners. Now, I do want to thank Mevotech for supporting the video and sending me out a bunch of suspension components so I could show you guys how to do this. And with that, we are ready to start removing the front suspension. Now, of course, before you begin any work, you want to make sure your car is safely jacked up and on jack stands. Another thing I like to do is I like to get the tire and slide it underneath just as an extra level of protection so the car can't completely drop in a worst case scenario. The next thing I like to do, since all the suspension bolts have been on here for a really long time, they're all rusty, I like to get some penetrating fluid and just spray down all the suspension bolts. I've already done this for the past couple of days because I knew I was gonna do this job. The penetrating fluid is gonna help loosen up the rusted nuts and bolts. It's gonna penetrate deep into the threads and lubricate it so it makes it easier to remove all these fasteners. So with every nut and bolt sprayed down with penetrating fluid, the first thing we want to remove is the axle nut. And this axle nut has a little indentation here that we have to straighten out before we can remove it. So get a little punch and a hammer and just push the rim of the axle nut out of this indentation. Beautiful. Now the idea is that little indented part is stuck inside the axle so the axle nut can't come out by mistake. So when we install our new axle nut at the end, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna indent the rim into the axle. 
All right, so now we can remove the axle nut, but the problem is if we try to loosen it, the axle is just gonna spin. So normally what I'd like to do is I'd like to put the wheel back on the car and then lower the car down to the ground so that doesn't spin. But I already did the other side and there's no suspension there. So another way to prevent the wheel from spinning is to stick a screwdriver into the cooling vanes on the brake rotor or have someone in the car press the brakes. And that'll hold the axle in place so you can break the axle nut loose. You'll definitely have to use a long breaker bar to get enough leverage to do this because axle nuts are on there tight. Also, don't hurt your back doing this. Bend from the knees and not from your back. With the nut loose, now we can remove it the rest of the way by hand. Good. And that's all there is to it. And notice how the penetrating fluid soaked into the threads a little bit, which made it easier to remove. Next, we can remove the brake caliper. There's two bolts behind here. In order to make it easier to remove, just turn the steering wheel to give you better access to those bolts. And you can see we have more room to remove the top caliper bolt and the bottom bolt. Just loosen that the rest of the way by hand, and now the brake caliper is loose. But before we remove it, we want to follow the brake line and remove any fasteners holding the brake line to the knuckle, like here and here. So let's remove the first 10 millimeter fastener holding the brake line in, good. And then the second 10 millimeter fastener, which is back here, good. And with the brake line free, we could remove the caliper. So slide a bucket or a block of wood under the wheel well. That way we could remove the caliper and place it on a piece of wood so there's no pressure on the brake line. Finally, we could get the brake rotor off and that's definitely gonna need some hammering. Only hit it like this if you're gonna replace it. Perfect, and with the rotor loose, let's remove it. All right, so with the brakes out of the way, now we could remove the hub. The hub is what the wheel bolts to. So in order to remove this, we wanna make sure we don't remove any other suspension parts because we need the suspension to hold the knuckle in as we pull the hub out. To pull the hub out, we're gonna be using our slide hammer, so let's grab the hub adapter and fit it in place. And it figures, because this Honda has such a small hub, the studs aren't fitting in the slots here. I could get one in, but I can't get the other. So I have a quick solution. I'm gonna thread on some lug nuts, and then hammer the studs so I bend them apart. Since I'm replacing this hub, I don't care if these studs bend. And look at that, perfect. Now thread on lug nuts to hold the slide hammer adapter in place. Then we could grab the slide hammer, thread it onto the adapter, and let's remove this hub. So what you do is slide the weight fast to knock the hub outwards. You're probably gonna have to do this a bunch of times, especially if the hub is original, and in this case, over 25 years old. And this is putting up a bigger fight than I thought. I'm not so sure this is gonna remove the hub. And unfortunately, sometimes that happens when you work on cars, your plan doesn't work. It would have made it so much easier just to pull this right out. How this works is, here's what the hub looks like. It's nice and smooth, this fits into the bearing, and the slide hammer pulls it right out. In this case, it's so rusty and old, it's not coming out easily. But it's not a huge deal, we're just gonna have to knock out that hub when we remove the entire knuckle. All right, so the next thing to do is to remove the knuckle that holds the bearing in. So the knuckle's held in by the upper ball joint there, by the tie rod ball joint right here, and by the lower ball joint under here. We remove those three ball joints and the entire knuckle will come out. So let's start with the upper ball joint. So this is a castle nut, and usually castle nuts have a cotter pin that goes through them and it's bent around the castle nut, but I think the cotter pin was so rusted it just fell apart. So let's see if we can break this nut loose. Beautiful. And then loosen it up the rest of the way. Now we're gonna take the same castle nut, flip it upside down, and screw it back onto the stud. This is actually a really helpful trick. Screw the castle nut in until the base of the nut is flush with the stud. Perfect. Then hammer that upwards to pop the stud out of the knuckle. And usually with the ball joint loose, you can't unscrew the nut because the stud just spins like you're seeing here. So get a locking pliers and clamp down onto the stud. Now the stud is held in place and we can remove the nut. Just like that. So with the upper ball joint completely removed, now let's move on to the lower ball joint down here. And with this lower ball joint, you can see now we have a cotter pin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up that cotter pin. This is gonna be really simple. And grab onto it and pull it right out just like that. Next, we could break this nut loose and remove it the rest of the way. And just like before, flip it over and reinstall it so it's flush with the stud. Now let's hammer it out. Unfortunately, again, things are not working as planned and this ball joint stud isn't popping out. So I'm gonna remove this nut. I don't wanna get the nut stuck on here and then it makes a bigger problem. And you can see the nut was already starting to get deformed. That means we're hitting this so hard it's not working. So this gives me the opportunity to show you a specialized tool designed exactly for popping out ball joint studs. All you need to do is place the tool over the control arm and slide it under the ball joint stud and tighten it down so it presses against the stud. Now you just tighten this until it pops. 
This is part of a ball joint puller set that could be rented for free from many parts stores, so this is another option I wanted to show you. Boom! That is all there is to it. Now we can remove the tool and the ball joint is free from the knuckle. And finally, the last thing to remove to get the knuckle out is the tie rod end. So let's bend the cutter pin open and it's okay to break the cutter pin because we do need to replace this anyway. A lot of times it makes it easier to remove like this. Then break the nut loose and unscrew it the rest of the way. Again, flipping the castle nut over and then hitting the nut and stud with a hammer to pop it out. Then remove the nut and the tie rod can be removed and the knuckle is finally free. So now that the entire knuckle is removed, we can remove the ball joint and bearing and that hub that we couldn't get off before. But before we do that, let's finish removing the rest of the suspension. And we might as well continue by working on the inner and outer tie rod. We're gonna keep this as one assembly. We're just gonna disconnect this right here from the steering rack. And the reason why we wanna keep this connected is because we'll be able to get a measurement from here to here. And when we install the new inner and outer tie rod, we can use that same exact measurement to give us a pretty accurate alignment. So to remove this tie rod, we're gonna need two wrenches and we need access to the inner tie rod ball joint right here. So slip one wrench onto the steering rack to hold it in place and use the other wrench to loosen the inner tie rod. With that loose, now we can loosen it the rest of the way by hand. Good. And notice there's a lock washer at the end here. I'll show you how to install this on the new tie rod so the tie rod doesn't come loose while you drive. And finally, remove that old broken boot. All right, so next let's go and remove the strut. The strut comes down and goes into this metal bracket here. Right here, there is a pinch bolt holding this in. We wanna remove that first before we remove any fasteners. So let's go get that loose. There we go, now it's loosening up. And let's remove this bolt the rest of the way by hand. Beautiful, and that's gonna make it so much easier to separate the strut from the metal bracket down here. So the next thing we need to do is remove this bolt holding the strut into the lower control arm. So get a wrench on one side holding the bolt in place as we unscrew screw the nut with the ratchet. Then we can remove the nut all the way and lightly tap the bolt out with the hammer. And with that bolt removed, the only thing holding the strut in are two fasteners right on top of the strut tower. So let's loosen up the first 14 millimeter nut and remove it the rest of the way. And let's remove the other nut as well. And once that's off, we can push the strut down. You're gonna have to push it some more to clear the control arm. Wiggle it a little. Oh, and the strut fork separated from the strut, so that's one last step. Okay, and that gives us room to remove the axle. So now we just need to follow the axle all the way to the transmission. So we're coming in from the outside, going under the car, and the axle goes right into the transmission right here. Now you just want to grab a pry bar, slide it between the axle and the transmission, and just pop it out. Perfect. Now before you remove the axle completely, get something to catch the leaking transmission fluid. Because when you remove the axle, some fluid might come out. And in this case, it looks like nothing's leaking, which is nice, so there's no mess and we don't have to refill it later on. So now with the axle free, we can remove it completely from the car. And we're so close to being done with the disassembly. All that's left is the lower control arm here and the upper control arm there. So let's get that upper control arm out. This is so easy to do. It's held in by two fasteners. So let's start with breaking this nut free right here and loosen it the rest of the way by hand. Now let's get that other nut removed completely as well. Good, so with both of these nuts removed, now we could go back under the car and this control arm should come right out like that. Beautiful. So now with that done, we have one more thing we need to do and that is remove this lower control arm. There is a bolt right here and there's a couple of bolts back here holding in a bushing. So let's go remove those bolts first. And there are three bolts that we need to remove that hold the control arm bushing in place. So let's break the first one loose. And that was a lot easier to break loose than I thought, given how rusty all this is. Next, we can remove the second bolt. And finally, we could finish off with removing that last bolt. So with this end completely loose, now we have one more bolt we need to remove, and that is right here. So let's break this final 17 millimeter bolt free and unscrew it the rest of the way by hand. And then we can wiggle the control arm right out of here. All right, so with this control arm removed, we have officially removed everything in this wheel well. And it wasn't that difficult. It's really that simple in most cases. All the fasteners came off pretty easily. If they were hard to remove, you just use a breaker bar, make sure you spray everything down with penetrating fluid. And it's that simple. It's just a bunch of nuts and bolts. So out with all the old suspension parts, and in with all the brand new ones. I cannot wait to get these installed. It's gonna make a huge difference from these old rusted parts to the brand new parts. Now what we need to do is we need to get our knuckle and remove the hub bearing and ball joint. I'll show you how to do that off the car. And since we have everything removed, I'm gonna clean up everything in here. I'm gonna hose it down and I'm gonna put a fresh coat of paint so we don't get any rust. 
It's important to clean the wheel well before you paint to remove all the dirt, oils, and grease, which will prevent the paint from sticking. I'm going to remove the fender liner for some more access, and let's spray down the wheel well with some soapy water, which will act as our degreaser. Then grab a brush and brush everything down. This is going to agitate all the dirt and make it easier to remove. Look at all that dirt just getting washed away. So let's finish up with a final rinse. And finally, I'm going to set up a fan right here to dry this off faster. So as we let that dry, that gives us the perfect opportunity to work on our knuckle. So we're going to go from this to this. This is the passenger side. I already did it. I already replaced everything. It looks great. Now I did say at the beginning of the video, if you can't get the specialized tools for rent or if you just don't want to tackle this part of the job, you can take your knuckle to a shop. They will press out all the old parts. So they'll press out the hub, the bearing, the ball joint, and they'll press in the new parts for you. Sure, it's going to cost you a little bit extra, but it might not be a bad option if you want. Now, of course, I'm going to show you right now how to remove everything and replace everything. So let's get started. And the first thing we need to do is get this old stubborn hub out now you saw before slide hammer was not working at all it's just so rust welded in there we're gonna need something with a lot more force now we don't have any fancy presses or anything here so we're gonna be using a good old hammer and let me show you how so grab your knuckle and this hub is gonna come out this way so we're gonna set this up in the vise so this outside ring right here is the bearing this inside ring is the hub just so you get a better idea, you can see this inside ring right here is the hub. We're going to go get a socket and place it right there so we can push the hub only and leave the bearing in place. So get a socket that fits right on the hub and let's hammer this hub out. You're probably going to have to use some pretty good force to get this out considering the slide hammer didn't work for it. Beautiful. And you can see how much better this worked compared to using that slide hammer. This worked a lot quicker and was a lot easier to get it out. And now let's get the bearing out. So the bearing is held in with a snap ring, and this is what prevents the bearing from coming out. And the trick with removing old rusty snap rings is to soak them in penetrating fluid to loosen them up. Now we could grab our snap ring pliers, squeeze them good, and that's not budging. So when your snap ring pliers just aren't strong enough to move that snap ring because the snap ring is so rust welded in here, a little trick is to get a punch and hammer and get that punch in one of the snap ring holes and tap the punch to break the snap ring free from the rust. Do this to the other side of the snap ring as well and hammer around the flat part of the snap ring again to break that snap ring free from all that rust that's gripping tight onto it. Now we could go back in there and give that snap ring pliers a good squeeze and that's working a lot better than before but it's still stuck so grab a flathead screwdriver and work your way around the snap ring to loosen it up and there we go. Now since we removed our snap ring from this side of the bearing, that means the bearing is going to come out this way because the snap ring was preventing it from coming out. So let's flip over the knuckle so we can knock this bearing out. Then we're going to get our bearing press kit and we want to grab a bearing adapter that we think will fit right on the outside of the bearing. So this right here is the correct adapter. You can see the outside edge of the bearing. We want this to fit right on the outside edge like that. There's a little bit of space around the whole thing where this will allow us to push that bearing out but it won't get caught up. If you use something too small like this, you're going to only push on this race right here and the bearing's going to get damaged. You're just going to pop that inside race out. And if you use something too big like this, you're not even going to be hammering the bearing. You're going to be hammering onto the knuckle and that's not going to move the bearing. So you want to find the right size that fits right in there. And now we're going to just hammer this out. For the bearing, you're going to need a decent amount of force to knock this out. Just be careful not to hit the knuckle, which could damage it. I like to use some penetrating fluid to both loosen up the rust and to lubricate the bearing so it comes out easier and you won't damage the knuckle as it's forced out. And we're almost there. You can see that bearing's about to pop out. Beautiful. And there you go. That is how you remove an old wheel bearing. There's nothing to it. And this one was pretty stuck in there, yet we still managed to pop it out with just a hammer. Next, it's important to use a pick or a thin flathead screwdriver and clean out the channel the snap ring sits in. Get all that rust out that's going to prevent the new snap ring from seating properly into that channel. This is important because this is what prevents your bearing from coming out. So let's wipe all the loose rust away and see how that snap ring fits. Perfect. That snap ring is all the way into the channel and that's exactly what we want to see. Next, let's remove this old rusty brake dust shield. I need to try to unscrew these three screws. They're Phillips heads, but I could tell this is going to be hopeless. And it is, just stripping that screw away. I'll have to try the other screw just in case, and as you can see, the rust is just too much. But don't worry, I have a super simple trick, and that's using a saw. What we want to do is saw a slot into the screw, essentially turning it into a flathead screw instead of a Phillips. Then we could use a larger flathead screwdriver, and that's what I'm talking about. That gave us enough leverage to break that screw free. So we turned something that was going to be a real pain to remove into something that wasn't difficult at all. 
you can't beat that. Now we can apply the same method to the other two screws. Good, that's the second one free. And again, saw a slot. And good, that's the third one free. Finally, with all the rusted screws removed, we could remove the dust shield. Now let's remove the old worn out lower ball joint. So we'll start by removing this snap ring. Use that snap ring pliers to spread that snap ring apart and remove it from the ball joint. It's also helpful to remove the rubber boot, so let's do that as well. So with the snap ring removed, now we can hammer out the ball joint. And just like the bearing, we're going to have to hammer it out on the shoulder of the ball joint. So find the right size socket that's going to fit on the shoulder, just like that. Then use penetrating fluid to help lubricate the ball joint for easier removal and just hammer the ball joint out. Notice I'm using a black impact socket, which could take the abuse of hammering. And that's all there is to it. So with that old hub, the bearing, and ball joint removed from the knuckle, now we want to prepare the knuckle to install the new hub, bearing, and ball joint. What you want to do is you want to look on the inside of the barrel here where the bearing sits and make sure there's no pieces of metal that are sticking out, any burrs or anything from hitting that bearing out that could cause issues when you push the new bearing in. In this case, this looks nice and smooth. Same thing with our ball joint here. If you did have any burrs on the edge, what you could do is you get a file and just file those burrs down so when you push the new bearing or ball joint in, it won't damage it. Since this is good, all you want to do is get some 400 grit sandpaper and lightly sand the surfaces where the ball joint and bearing slide into. The idea is to get them rust free, smooth and clean, and just give the ball joint and bearing a fresh surface to press into. Beautiful. So you see how nice and smooth and clean that surface is? It's rust free. That's exactly what we want to see in the bearing spot and in the ball joint spot. Now for everybody who knows me, this is not going to be going back in looking like this. We'll be painting the knuckle, so I taped off where the bearing and ball joint slide into. Next, use a metal wire brush to remove all the loose dirt and rust from the knuckle. It doesn't have to be 100% rust free because we're going to be using paint that bonds to the rust, but we definitely need to make sure the loose rust is removed. Good, and that's what we want it to look like. So not only am I going to paint the knuckle, but I'm going to paint the strut fork and I'm going to paint the entire chassis over here in the wheel well. I did move the bumper off to the side, just a couple of clips, so let's get started. So with the clean and dry surface, I'm starting off with a special silver colored paint that bonds to the rust and it seals the metal surface so no new rust could form. After that dries, I'm going over it with a special thick black paint that adds a second barrier against rock chips, brake dust, oil and grease. It's also going to make this wheel well look really nice. I'm going to follow the same exact steps for the knuckle and strut fork, paint on the silver colored paint, and after that dries, paint on the thick black paint. All right, with those parts painted and with our wheel well and chassis painted, look at that. Not only does that look good, but that paint barrier is going to prevent rust. So now all we need to do is let it dry. And 24 hours later, our paint is completely dry. So we're ready to install our brand new ball joint and bearing. So for this video, we've already covered a lot of information. We disassembled the entire front worn out suspension from control arms to tie rods, the axle, the strut, ball joints and bearings and hubs and even the brakes. We removed it all. So we went from this old worn out suspension to this completely gutted wheel well with fresh paint. So with all these old parts removed, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to install your entire front suspension, including pressing in the new ball joint bearing and hub. That way, everything's going to be brand new in our front suspension. We'll get her aligned and see how she drives. So I'm going to make it really simple for you guys to find that video so you can see how to install all the suspension parts. I'll post a link in the description, and I'm also going to have a link right here on the screen. Just click the screen right there, and that'll take you to the next video on putting the suspension together. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell for more videos just like this. And finally, all the tools and products I used in this video are linked in the description so you could easily find them.